All right, today I'm gonna show you a quick hard surface tip in ZBrush, and this applies to the desktop and the iPad version, but we're doing it on the iPad today. So let's go ahead and go to the new sculpt button and open up a Dynamesh sphere. Now, I always start by turning off my perspective, uh, just because that's how I like to work. And what we're gonna do is go to the top right-hand corner, and we're gonna go ahead and add a cylinder. The cylinder, we're gonna make a, a little bolt, and this is kind of referencing uh, some of the workflows I've been using for making the Jinx grenade, because Arcane is right around the corner. Let's go ahead and hold select on our polysphere. First select our polysphere and then hold and then delete. We don't need this nonsense, just the cylinder. Now, from here, what we're gonna do is we are gonna go to our subtool menu. We're gonna go to the geometry tab and then we're gonna go to edge loops and we're gonna find delete loops. The reason why we want to do that is because when we turn on our polyframe, we have just a nice cylinder just doing its thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and hold control or the little mask dude over here on this menu and make a mask at the very top of our thing. And then we're gonna go to our subtool menu and then go to polygroups and we are going to select group by masks, group masks like so. Group mask, did that work? Yes, it did. All right, cool. So now we're gonna get rid of our mask and we are going to hold uh, control or little mask and make a mask on the outside of our mesh without selecting any polygons to clear. Okay, cool. Now what I will do is I'm going to make this a little bit tinier because we're gonna making, making a flathead screwdriver and then just put that right there so it's at our base floor. I wanna make sure we have our poly group on the very top. Now, if I wanna bevel this, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go to my geometry tab and under geometry, I'm gonna find my crease option. So under crease, I'm gonna go ahead and select crease polygroups. And when we do that, we can see that there's a nice hard edge there. You can see here that we have a polygroup on the bottom as well. I don't want that. I actually wanna keep that sharp. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that by two finger tapping. And I'm gonna go ahead and first make a mask around everything. And I could very well just go to my polygroups and just do mask visible, but we already made a mask. So we're basically doing the same thing, group mask. So now our cylinder is a single mask polygroup, masked polygroup, it's polygroup. Make sure there's no mask on it. Get rid of the transpose so we have no gizmo. We're just looking at our thing. One more time, make a mask over the top and then we will group masks. So now we have a polygroup on the top but not on the bottom. Now the reason why we do it that way is we clear our mask, go back to our subtool menu, geometry, and we are gonna go to our crease once again and crease polygroups. So now it's just a crease on the top, but not the bottom. From here, under the crease option, we're gonna select our bevel and this will create a bevel around our creases. So we'll hit the bevel option right there. And if we go down under our geometry tab and just find our bevel width, we can make this larger or smaller. So I'll just set that right there. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna go back to my polygroups by going to the tool menu and we're gonna go to the group by normals right here. Now under group by normals, we can bring the angle down. We just wanna make a polygroup around every single uh, significant transitional edge uh, to, get, to get that nice hard surface look. So we'll select group by normals and now we have a polygroup on the top, around our bevel, around the side, and then the bottom. Now, this is useful because it's actually gonna lean into the actual trick I wanted to show you today. So if we select our tool menu and we go to the plus sign and we add a new cube, we have a new cube in our scene, we are going to position that exactly where we want. So we have our cube. First, we'll click our gizmo in the lower toolbar and we will just bring this up, maybe scale it on the Y, scale it on the X, don't select the rotate tool jags, and then just make it just a little bit. We're gonna make a flathead screwdriver, so, or flathead screw for the screwdriver uh, to show this polygroup tip. So we're just gonna put that right there and uh, we're just gonna 
get it to a thickness that is that looks realistic. Now, from here, we're gonna go back to our tool menu, go to poly groups and uh, group by normals, and we're gonna make sure we group by normals. Then under our Z remesher tools, right here, this little uh, cube, perspective cube in the lower toolbar thing, we're gonna go to Z remesh. Now, before you hit Z remesh, please do it this way. Uh, you're gonna set the poly count to like 0.1, maybe 0.2. It doesn't need to be super dense, but I do recommend making sure you have somewhat even geometry for this trick to work. Uh, you're gonna go ahead and under your Z remesher options, you're gonna turn on keep groups. You're going to bring the smooth groups down to zero. Then under our Z remesher options, we're gonna turn on adapt, keep adapt on. We're gonna turn on detect edges, and then we're gonna go down in the Z remesher options and set the adaptive size to zero. Now from there, we can hit Z remesh. We're gonna get a nice, clean, just distribution of very minimal topology cube. We're gonna use Booleans for this now to create our little flathead bolt screw thing. Now from here, what we need to do is go into our tool menu and then with our Boolean selected, the main thing that we're using to cut our shape out, we're gonna hold click so then it brings up our menu here and then go to our Boolean process and set this to subtraction. Now nothing's gonna happen, but if you turn on the Boolean menu, which is this like cross circle thing, and then we turn off our polyframe with this LF button, we can see that now we have a thing, which is exactly what we want. So from here, I'm gonna hold the alt button or the plus minus and first turn off my gizmo, hold the plus minus and tap on my main shape, which is that cylinder. And I'm gonna go to my tool menu, turn on geometry. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top of my crease menu and turn on crease. And then under my geometry tab, I'm gonna go under my dynamic subdivision, which is gonna be right here. And I'm gonna turn this on. Now, we can see that it got really soft. And the reason why is if we turn on our polyframe, we don't have a crease on all of our poly groups. We just have it on like the, the, the main uh, sort of transitional edges. So what we can do to fix that is we can go back to our crease option and find crease crease and instead of just creasing by angle we can either set it by angle or we can just go ahead and crease polygroups and now that's going to give us a nice hard surface sort of bolt look it looks like a the, the head of a screw sort of thing awesome so now we can unsolo that by clicking the little uh three so this solo button down here on the lower right hand corner then from here we can go ahead and turn off our polyframe we have our screw what we need to do is go into our subtool menu and scroll down until we find Boolean. We're gonna turn on this button right here. It's gonna allow us to create a Boolean with our dynamic subdivision and then hit make Boolean mesh. That's gonna take a second. Once the thing stops loading, then we can go to our subtools over here by just tapping on uh, this thing right here. And then we can see that we have a new subtool and that is gonna be our screw. Awesome, okay, cool, we're getting somewhere, but there's one problem. If we go ahead and turn on our polyframe, oh my God, it's awful, it's gross. But the reason why we do it this way is because when we create that Boolean mesh with polygroups that's looking at the front, back, left, right, etc., we can see here that every single face has its own polygroup. And the reason why this is valuable is because we can now go into our Z remesher options and pretty much do the same thing. Now, if you notice in the top left hand corner, you have your active points. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that my Z remesher, we're above about 2000. So just eh, maybe we could keep it around the same. So we could just hit same there. We will get this down to a lower mesh, I promise. But we're let's just set it same for now. And then we're gonna go ahead and turn on keep groups. That's important. Keep adapt on, but make sure our smooth groups is set down to zero. Go down and adaptive size to zero. Thank you, Ian Robinson, for this tip. Now from here, we're gonna hit Z remesh. And now we have much cleaner topology for this screw. And the reason why this is the workflow I'm using for a lot of the hard surface stuff I'm using in ZBrush is now, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and subdivide this by a lot. 
that's uh, 8 million polygons. Okay, cool. It's, it's a little crunchy right now, but if I go ahead and go into my tool menu, geometry, crease poly groups, and I undo that first before we subdivide, let's go ahead and crease poly groups, and then we subdivide it. Subdivide, divide, divide, divide. One more time, divide. Two million points for just a screw. Let me just make my point really quick. The reason why I like this workflow for the hard surface stuff is now if I turn off my poly frame, if I wanted to add some extra details to my high poly mesh, this is the high poly, you wouldn't bring this into a game or anything like that, especially if you have like a million screws. But if you want to have some like extra detail, if you needed to get like a close up shot with this many points and cleaner topology, we can go in and add a couple like with the trim dynamic, uh, brush, which is going to be this guy right here. Uh, yeah, it's totally one of my favorites. We can go ahead and just start scuffing it up like so. And we have all this extra topology on the low version to give us those little um, hard surface details that you might see in like, I don't know, a mech thing or something, but let's say it's like a damaged mech and you could go even further with this and hit the divide one more time. And you, this is super dense, but the reason why I've uh, been liking this workflow for my little sketches and concept art and stuff like that is because I can go into my Damien standard, which is going to be this guy. And I can go ahead and uh, bring my brush size down a little bit and then go ahead and make like a scratch right there. And then if I hold the plus minus button and then go around the edge of this, do, 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 do. and then I go to my flatten brush and then I make it just a little smaller with three fingers, by the way, up and down is gonna uh, make our brush size larger and smaller. And then I can just go in and uh, make that little cut on this portion just a little bit more pronounced if I needed that kind of like detail right there. So now I can see that that thing has a little, little like someone took a, a they missed the screw as they, they were um, bringing their screwdriver towards it. So all that is to say, polygroups, Z remesher, booleans. It's a good tip that I learned while I was at Lightbox and uh, wanted to share that. If you learned something, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else. Comment section is down for that as well. And I'll leave you with the final tip. One gram of protein, group on body weight. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.